You're listening to the Fan Fan Podcast, and on this episode, we're talking about getting ready for the 2023 Fantasy Football Draft. You're listening to the Fan to Fan Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Freddy Gonzalez. With me today, Fan to Fan All Star, Alan. We've talked about favorite TV theme songs, Saturday morning cartoons, video store memories, 80s 3D movies, horror movies, all the stuff that we're fans of. And in the spirit of that, I guess in the spirit of the show, right, we're going to talk about something that we're fans of, and that's fantasy sports. And I guess specifically, we're going to talk about fantasy football and honestly, why not, right? Fantasy is a part of culture, part of pop culture. And if the show is a celebration about pop culture, fantasy football is definitely a part of the conversation. So let's talk about it. And we brought in Alan because he is a hardcore fan of fantasy football. And I think for folks that may be surprised by this topic, Alan, um, let's let's give him a, a little bit of street cred. Why are you in here to talk about fantasy football? So, I mean, I've been playing fantasy football, Bernie, since uh, 2004. That was my first ever season uh, back on, on Yahoo. Coming up on almost 20 years. Yeah, I thought about that recently when you when, when you approached me about coming on and doing a fantasy podcast that I'm obviously very excited about that for the main reason that I, I consume probably more um, fantasy data. I, I love fantasy, obsessed about it. I'm currently in three leagues. Um, wow. My first title came back in 2009. That's sort of my my, my chronology. I, I I started in 04 in a league with the Mike's Movies guys, so that's how that that's how you got to tie into. Um, just because we work in video stores doesn't mean we are not hardcore fantasy addicts. Um, it was one of the first years that Yahoo uh, was ever online, which was pretty cool. Um, I always came in last place in that. I had no idea what I was doing back then. I was doing a lot of drugs, um, and uh, <laughs> you know, not really paying attention, just watching a lot of Patriots football and not a lot of league football. Um, something that changed by, by 09, when I entered the home league that I'm still in now in 2023, uh, shout out to the mass holes. Um, I've taken their money four times, uh, you know, since 2009 appeared in I think six title games, playoffs. So every year, but two of them, including last year. So now I'm coming for them. And I also, uh, for the last four years have, uh, played in a keeper league. This is why you're on, Alan, because I, I've been playing for seven years. I've won a championship once. I've been in the playoffs six out of those seven years, so I feel like I've done well. And when you see those matchups, especially on some of the apps, and I, we've used a few of them in our league, and it's a work league, and that's how I got into it. You know, but there's a slot that's open. Someone realizes that maybe you, you'd be a good addition. You know, uh, you're willing to take a few jabs. You know, it's just another way to to have some uh, good camaraderie with people and with work. It's, you know, maybe people you don't know very well. At least for me, it was a great icebreaker because I think there is a way where fantasy, at least in the time that I've been playing, and certainly you've seen it more, Alan, it's like its own cottage industry, paid websites that give you, like you said, metrics, analytics, uh, uh, who you should pick, when you should pick them, YouTube shows, social media accounts just dedicated to covering fantasy football. All the different angles, the analytics, the matchups, the strength of schedule, injuries, trades, all of the off the field stuff that impacts the on the field play. And I think this is where if, if you're coming into this, just know like we're not going to cover everything because there's no way we could cover everything. There's fantasy draft and then the fantasy season and the season is like its own thing. Like I said, people, it's its own cottage industry. People focus daily updates on just keeping up with that. We can't do that. So we're going to focus on the draft because it's timely because people are starting to get ready for the draft. Uh, have you already drafted, Alan, in, in one of the three leagues you're in? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. But so um, we have picked draft order in two okay. leagues. The third league is picking draft order uh, tonight. I, I don't want to say the whole name of the league because it's a uh, it's quite offensive, but it's, uh, <laughs> they're picking the draft order tonight. So, um, you know, everybody, which, which is down. half the fun, right? Like naming your league, naming your team. Again, sure. it's just, it's all a part of the the whole thing. And, and folks who don't play fantasy may not get it, but yeah. I, I mean, I think this is the thing, right? Like we can like Star Trek, we can like Star Wars, we can like horror, we can like Taylor Swift and we can like sports. We, we did a draft order party for Massels, right? Okay. Where we like met at a bar and we threw darts for draft order, which was really fun. One dartboard had the numbers. The other mm -hmm. dartboard had the names. 
and you had to correlate, right? And, you know, like you order wings and you get beers and shots. I got drunk two Sunday afternoons in a row doing draft order parties. Because, again, um, that, that's also half the fun is getting together with everyone yeah. to, to do the draft. Be a part of the whole Choosing draft the experience. Yeah. And the in-jokes that start at draft and then continue throughout the rest of the season, if you can, you want to be a part of that. So much fun. That's definitely one of the fun times. And why I figured, hey, let's start covering the draft first. The season just is a vacuum of time, energy, emotion, but so is the draft. So if, if, if you can enjoy it with a bunch of people, do it because it's fun. Let's get into it. I think maybe one of the two ways to approach this, because again, this is a, this is a, a big beast. I, I want to start with you, especially since, again, you've been in the trenches for longer than I have. Before we get into positions, people that you're high on, people that you're low on, maybe some sleepers, generally... I just want to talk to you, uh, talk with you about draft strategy. Because again, this could be its own like 60 episode part podcast sure. just on draft strategy. But I'm going to throw some things at you and I just want you to tell me what you think, if it's worked, if it hasn't worked. So round one, typically what I have always seen, one, either you're going RB heavy, you're going for that running back, running back, you, you solidify your running back core. But I've also seen the other version for folks that then just go wide receiver, wide receiver, or maybe then you get the third option where you get the balance. All right. If you have number one or two, you get that Justin Jefferson, you snake back around, right? And then maybe you go after Pollard or or James Conner or something, you know, you go for that. So that way you're like, all right, I've got a solid receiver that can give me some points, a solid running back. And then you start getting into other positions. So what's your strategy in that first to second round? Do you go RBRB, RB, wide receiver RB? What do you do? For me, it depends first and foremost on format. In the old days, all we could play was standard, which what was very special about the Massel League until this season is we played by standard scoring rules since 2009, which like okay. only in an old school home league would you see that, right? That So anyways, in standard, that is where you're going to pound RBs heavy, right? Like you're never really going to see, uh, I'm sorry, wide receivers go early and a standard, and standard scoring is simply this. You do not get points for receptions. Points come through rushing yards, receiving yards, touchdowns, so standard scoring keeps your score lower. Generally in standard scoring, if you score over 100 points, like Matthew Berry, who's a great fantasy analyst once, absolutely, you know, had, had, had this stat that in standard scoring, basically if you score over, I think it was like 106 or 107, you're very likely to make the playoffs in your mm -hmm. league, right, on an average. But that's very tough to do in standard scoring because you don't get points for receptions. A lion's share of leagues now go by PPR, which mm -hmm. is points per reception. That makes games go up to 200 points. I mean, really, like you're, uh, you, you'll see teams uh, average at 150, 160, depending on, on on your scoring metrics. But every t when you get points for receptions, you're just dumping points into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a, there's another uh, uh, platform called Half Point PPR, which is you get a half a point, point five for every reception. That kind of lives in that world between standard and PPR. I don't know anybody who plays half point, but there are a lot of half point leagues out there, so I don't want to denigrate it. I've never played it. For the most part, every league I'm in now is PPR. And of course, there's, you know, there's the standard lineup of two wide receivers, two running backs, quarterback, tight end, flex, defense, kicker. Thinking about it now, like the 106 point total kind mm -hmm. of makes sense because again, if if you're this part of the conversation, like we're in the weeds. So I, I feel yeah. less like I should explain it, but your quarterback might come out with 15 to 25 points. Maybe you have a receiver who shows out 20 points or something. But like you said, your quarterback, your receiver, your WR2, RB1, RB2, just between them alone, you should be in that 60 to, to 80 range. And if your kicker can get you a few points, your defense can get you 10 points, your tight end can get you a few points, then now you're talking, yeah, that, I mean, it kind of starts adding up and that's how you get your, uh, your 106. If you're playing a PPR, which is like a majority of the of what you know what I what, what I think of the modern fantasy world does, you're, you're you're looking to get those those top end wide receivers early, the Justin Jeffersons, the Jamar Chases. Uh, there are a couple of of running backs now. Don't forget, over the last uh, five to ten years, we moved away from the work horse running back. Hundred percent. Right? The uh, uh, what, running back. There, by there are <laughs> there are a few left in the NFL: Derrick Henry, Nick yep. Chubb. 
those type of guys who say get 75% of, of, of the carry for their team, right? Probably more. They're, they're, they're fewer and far between. Now is, is the time of the PPR back, the Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler. So those are guys in PPR that you want to focus on uh, higher in the round. You know, like you, you want to collect. Uh, my brother and I have this saying. My brother is also a fantasy uh, nut. You want to accumulate points. You want to pick guys in the first round that are going to score you points. There's a lot of analysts that tell you that um, you can't win with like the league with your first round pick, but you can definitely lose it. Uh, like if you're worried about a guy's injury history, right? If you're worried about a guy's age, you know, natural regression that comes with time. Be wary of those things in the first round, you know, like base your first round picks on a combination of age, point potential, positive regression. Let me let's give out some good examples. I know someone that I think you're you're kind of down on is DeAndre Hopkins. Three or four years ago, he would have been a first, maybe second round pick for sure, because he was a stud. You knew you could count on him for maybe a deep pass touchdown. So that's just spotting you 12, 14 points in one play, in one sure. reception, but with age, with time, with matchups, has come to devaluing of a, of someone like a DeAndre Hopkins or even someone like an Odell Beckham that, not for long league, that's why it's called the NFL, because you come back from injury and next thing you know, forget matchups, like you still can't beat Father Time. And if you're coming back from injuries, all of a sudden Odell, who was like a perennial top five for sure in a draft, no, not that long ago, yeah. now, now, like he's certainly not in like maybe the first three or four rounds, depending on you know who, what, who your league is or or who maybe is an Odell Homer. You gotta you gotta factor that in too. Hopkins is a great example. Hopkins thirty one years old. He played I think nine games last season for Arizona. If you if you look at his numbers over those nine games, he was he was a top ten wide receiver, but. He only played nine games and he only played nine games a year before. And with the, uh, you know, the, the issue with Hopkins, uh, to me is not necessarily performance. It's availability in fantasy. You, you, you really need guys who are going to be there for 17 games. Yes. And if they're not there for 17 games and you need them to be there for 16 and 15 and so on, as many games as you can get. So with a guy like D hop, this is his, his age 31 season coming up. Mm-hmm. Last year was his age 30 season. The year before that was his age 29 season. The cliff. Four wide receivers is generally the age of 29. Mm. Even elite wide receivers, you still see them have a good season here and there at 29 and 30. Devontae Adams just had a great season at 29, mm-hmm. right? But is a little bit le- it was a little bit less spectacular when you look inside the box score. He had a lot of blow up weeks. Adams back to Hopkins. Uh, like I wouldn't touch Hopkins this season with a 10 foot pole. There's a lot of people drafted him rounds four, five, six in PPR drafts. You know, they think he's going to be a target whore over in, in Tennessee. Uh, they, you know, they think that you're going to get him for 16 games because last year was a suspension and not necessarily an injury. He's 31 years old. Mm-hmm. He has played nine games a season for two years. Yeah. I don't fuck with those guys. The only person he will benefit is maybe Traylon Burks, who may get a few more receptions, right? Because the yeah. matchup may steer and away. That's- and that's it. Burks stays healthy. Yeah, 100%. Burks stays healthy. Burks yes. hurt again. So, yes. I mean, it's, you know, they got to look out there at Tennessee as, as Chig and stay with uh, stay with Derrick Henry, who, by the way, is rushing metrics have dropped like every year okay. for the last three years. I want to uh, get into mm-hmm. this because I think with this whole early round wide receiver running back strategy, is the strategy for you, you're going after Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, Stephon Dix, because wide receivers typically get injured less than the running backs, than the Derrick Henrys, the Pollards, you know, the Jonathan Taylors. So you know that they're going to be available for probably 17 games. And uh, unless something happens, at least they're going to be able to give you points versus a running back where you have two or three things against you, right? You've got game speed where maybe they're just killing it in the fourth quarter because the lead is there. So they're not really going for points. They're just really going to kill the time. They're just killing the clock, right? And then two, you've got age. Uh, and and injuries that could factor into them. And then, of course, like the running back by committee thing versus like a Justin Jefferson, right? Like it it doesn't matter if he's open, they're going to look for him and he's going to get your points. And if you can do that for 17 games, you're good. If it's the fourth quarter and the Titans are up by 27 points, Derrick Henry is maybe going to get the ball. Maybe it's just going to be on the sidelines, but it doesn't matter. He's not getting you points. With running backs, it's uh, you, you want them to have goal line opportunities. You want them to catch the ball, to be uh, involved in as many plays as possible because so many running backs now play in a committee. You have to live with 60, 40 splits uh, you know, with their second runner. It, this is my advice on, on, on running backs. I I believe you can find running backs later. 
I have really, really deep. Well, they'll be running backs. Yeah, I, I, I have, I have deprioritized the position like by a great margin, and there, there are people that would argue you, you and every, uh, every GM and owner. That's out there. Yeah, you know, like I, I mean, it's uh, especially in PPR. Uh, I'm not even like thinking about a running back until the mid routes. And, uh, and, okay, and be be specific now, Alan. All right, uh, we're we're talking like round five or six. Five or six. The five six. So if I'm picking oh. first, that's the five six turn. If I'm picking ten, it's the five six turn. If I'm picking in the middle, it's probably round six. Okay. Um, you know, in 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 last year that that strategy paid off for me uh big in in Champs League, right? So Champs League I uh which is the keeper league, I I, I waited until like the seventh round to pick up Damian Pierce of Houston. Wow a rookie, right? You gotta you gotta look for when you're gonna do the strategy, which is called zero RB. Yes. And I love it. I yep. love it. I think it's the only way to fly. I got Damian Pierce. I got I got Ramondre Stevenson late. Wow. Oh, uh, I got man. James Cook late. Yeah, I mean and you just uh, you you work within that, and 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 the team I had was 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 excellent. And at some point, I traded last season, and then in, within the season, right? Because I draft all of these all these wide receivers that are just fat point grabbers, right? And now I have my keeper league in champs is a three wide receiver league plus a flex. We don't use kickers, we don't use defense. We're very advanced, so you're playing up to four wide receivers at once. So I had so many wide receivers, so many fucking wide receivers. That people were overpaying me for wide receivers, and I ended up with Josh Jacobs last season, who, as you know, was RB1. I'm yeah. sorry, RB2 behind Christian McCaffrey. Sure. By the season's end, he got the ball, right? Josh McDaniels used him in every situation, all three downs. He was catching passes. He was lugging the ball. He was in on the goal line. He was scoring so many. T- Josh Jacobs won me so many games in that league last year. And this is, to me, how the future of RB looks in fantasy football. I don't think it in in five years. I don't think anyone's going to be picking running backs like until round three or four. Wow, uh, at, at, at the at the earliest, like you said, between the the running back by committee, if it wasn't already devalued, it's only going to be continued to be devalued by play callers, by the coaches, right? Sure. Who are who are looking at their they're they're not looking at it from a fantasy perspective like you and I may be, where we're like, no, you're taking away oh, they, the value of a the coaches fucking or an Eckler. Yeah. Like, no, I don't care. You guys love uh, drafting uh, Saquon Barkley in the first round. You know what I like? Sitting Saquon in the fourth quarter so he can give me three good quarters because we're up by fourteen twenty one, and they can just we can just eat it in the clock. And you're like, that's it. Saquon's day is over. He's done at 12 points. Meanwhile, Danny Dimes is still out there throwing to someone. So your argument is, well, then keep the someone on the field because that's the person that's getting you points, either with receptions, touchdowns, but at least you're getting you something. Yeah, just you know, just just make sure that that your running backs are are on the field at least 60 percent of their the time. Uh, okay, because I mean, you're really you're really if you're going with a secondary back in a committee, which people have to do because of injury and attrition in a fantasy season, right? Yes. But you shouldn't be worrying about that at the draft. The draft is the time for you to go four and out. That is one of my one of my theories is you wanna you wanna come out of your draft with a with a team that can take you to four and zero, oh, five and one, four and one, whatever. Mm-hmm. That team should cover your first four or five weeks. Then from there, you should be making trades and waiver ads that change genuinely change the the scope of your team. Sure. I've only ever had one team like in the last five years or so, and it was two thousand and eighteen. So you're talking like almost 20 years plus multiple leagues that you're in. Right. So it's not just like, oh, in, in 20, uh, 20 rosters you've had, so, it's probably been like 20 times three rosters a year. So you've got right. plus rosters you're talking about. So you're saying of that big group, only one, were you going to say you didn't adjust your, you didn't really change your roster? I made one trade in, in 18 um, for David Johnson, who was already kind of like falling to shit at that mm. point. But I, you know, I, I got, I got, I added David Johnson to, to an absolutely lethal mix and I just stayed with it and I rolled and I haven't done that since like the, the, the mid aughts where in the mid aughts, when positions were different and, and, and the, and the fantasy running back was King and also the fantasy quarterback was King, which mm-hmm. is coming back around Bernie. Um, you could pick a team, uh, you know, in 2005 and, and run with that team for the rest of it. If it was bad, you were bad. And if it was mm. good, you were good. There were people on the waiver wire like there have been in the last 10 years. I mean, you know, like I, I won a championship in 2015 by literally working the waiver wire every week like a tr- like a trash bag. I think. And then just to be like, specific, like, like at you're looking at matchups, right? Like you're looking yeah. at like maybe teams that actually this is where fantasy is 
so different from the on the field play where you're like, no, like the the Jaguars are going to have uh, they're not they're going to have a terrible strength of schedule, right? Like they're going to be the underdog. So I know that they're going to have to throw the ball and they're going to throw it into the fourth quarter. And that means my quarterback right. is getting me points. And if that guy's on the waiver wire, then I get it. If Mahomes is throwing it to Kelsey, they're up by 20 some points. It's run, 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 run. And he's just running the fourth quarter. But if you're the Jaguars, if you're any of the shitty teams, yeah. you're throwing into the fourth quarter, so you're getting points. Sure you are, yeah. yeah. And I mean, the the good offenses will emerge. The 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 the, the keen drafter, the really sharp drafter, can kind of see the good offenses coming. I mean, I'm not always the best at doing that, but I am really good at adjusting. Like mm. in in season, you can kind of tell what a team is after like three or four weeks. Sure. So like the Seahawks last year are a great example. Everyone had them counted out. Gino at quarterback, Tyler Lockett's old, they have no running game, you can't count on Rashad Penny, which you couldn't. All they have is DK, right? Yep. And DK ends up being kind of like, you know, like, like, you know, DK is totally undervalued this season because of of the sort of shit numbers he put up last year. But That's like right. <laughs> the Seattle offense hummed, right? Last mm-hmm. season, it absolutely hummed. Jacksonville hummed. Detroit came out of nowhere. That's right. Hummed. I'm on Ross St. Brown, Jared Goff. Uh, Jamal Williams scoring something like 12, you know, 12 or 15 touchdowns. That's right. Getting all those, like, stealing all that work from Swift. It's very important to try and, and pinpoint those offenses and also target the, the offenses that you know are stacked, right? So, like you said about the Chiefs with Mahomes and Kelsey, you know that if you take one of those guys, it, it like, up high in the draft, that, like, your team's going to be fucking ripped. Kelsey, you could almost, in a very unique position in the tight end, you could almost pencil him in for as many points as like a, a top tier WR. Uh, so because, his, so yeah. Kelsey's stats uh, beg out to basically like he he's like a back end number one uh, receiver at tight end, which means that your position dominance. Yes. You know? So I mean, he's, he's and there's a, a drop better. between him and number two or three. I mean, it's not like like a receiver, right? Like you get Justin Jefferson, who may be your one A. You could argue a Jamar Chase could be a one B, but you don't have to go very far before you get into like another really solid receiver versus tight end where it's like, all right, you got Mark Andrews, everybody else. It, it, it really is. They're like, a mile you, away. Yeah. They're, yeah, miles away, 100%. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, you know, you, you get the hype this year, like the uh, the Twitter X hype on tight ends and stuff like that. Just like, For sure. The, the position hasn't, hasn't fucking paid out in, in, in years, I, right? It's I think I, been, I, I've seen like bring downs guy. where people yeah. do like every tight end and they're like, oh, well, maybe, you know, Waller's going to ball out and this this will be the year for Kyle Pitts. It's like, you know what? I, I'm going to go with history here. You know what? There's probably only two or three. And like you said, you kind of know who one and two are. Right. Three will maybe play itself out after Just. three or four weeks. Turns out the Packers are valuing the tight end position and maybe Luke Musgrave is getting some more passes from Love. It's a great so name. all of a sudden now yeah. Musgrave is on my radar. And if you didn't you know can... that in the draft, then you know somebody else is picking him up anyway. Right. But... And you get you get a guy like Musgrave for free. Right yes. now, I mean, if you're, you're you're drafted right now and you're taking Musgrave, no one there's probably not a lot of sharps in your league, and 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 so no, yeah, someone is not going to jump up and take him thirteenth yes. round. You're going to get him in the fifteenth round, in the sixteenth round, if you have if you go that deep. Um, you could take him last overall, Mister Irrelevant, and he could pay off. And if not, you cut his ass. If you don't get Kelsey or Andrews, my general theory is to just pick a guy on a good offense who has the starting job and go mm. for the points per reception. Yes, go for the Pat Fryer moves. And go for the Dallas Goddards, you know. Yeah. These so guys the red get zone, around tight end right. ball, and they'll be a big target, and maybe uh they'll they'll get that five, two yard red zone reception. And you know what? If they give you a six to seven points, then you know what? That's great. And then you I like you're saying spend a fourth round pick on on TJ Hawkinson. There you it's go. It's just not worth it to me. Remember, you can find the fan to fan podcast at www.fanpodcast.com. Facebook, just search fan two fan podcast that's f-a-n the number two f-a-n on instagram at fan to fan podcast or on twitter at fan to fan podcast we'd love to hear from you so send a message and let us know what you think of the show thanks and now on with the show all right let's get into some positions here because i want to start breaking down the big positions we're not talking about kickers or defenses let's let's get into the big ones so i think one of the bigger ones let's go down is is quarterback because you talked about quarterbacks and there's been a higher value that folks have gotten in fantasy from quarterbacks because the mobile quarterback has now become almost the default versus before where you had the pocket throw right 
If you're going into this draft this year, Alan, who who are you high on uh, as far as a quarterback? I mean, so obviously you have you have the top three bracket of Mahomes, Hurts, and Allen. Uh, you know, the three best offensive teams in the NFL. High on all of them. Mahomes does it with his arm, a little bit with his legs. Uh, mm-hmm. Just so Mahomes, uh, Mahomes is like a cheat code. Yeah, and if you get him, you know, just be prepared to win a lot of games. He also, as my brother wanted me to point out to you, he plays in primetime games, Bernie, mm. which means that you might be down 20, 30 points going into Sunday night football, but Mahomes is going to be playing. That's, or he's going to be playing in the four yep. o'clock slot, or he's going to be playing on a fucking Monday night. He's always, it, it, when you, whenever you come up against the team with Mahomes, he's always playing last, yes. whatever that. So he's also always scoring 30, 35 points a game. He's yes. a weapon. You have Josh Allen, you have Jalen Hurts, you, you you have a running back and a quarterback all yes. in one. Um, you are you are scoring volume points with these players, always better than the person across from you. Um, you know, and that's a big thing in fantasy is when you look at the the the, the team you're playing that week, how many positions are you actually winning on paper in yes. projections? Hundred percent with those two guys. Uh, so below them though, uh, some guys I I I love to highlight. Obviously, jo- uh, Fields, Justin Fields. All right. Um, I'm I'm a Chicago Chicago guy, so I got I'm high on on fields too. Are are you worried at all though about like the the balance between? And I get it. The Justin Fields should be saying I'm going to throw more because he's you know been told that if he doesn't throw more, he's basically not going to have a career. But maybe the other part of it is he has maybe that instinct that a lot of these athletes do, which is I will. But I also know I have the ability to run if I have to. So you're not sure. worried about injuries. You're not worried about you know th- that fumble that may come because you know once you're a runner, anything's anything anything can happen. So I had I I had Justin Fields. I had the pleasure of having him last year in in Massholes, my oldest um, home league, and he you know I I ended up inserting him over Geno for that seven game run, and he's the guy that kind of brought me all the way back Lord. to the edge of. The yeah. edge of fucking playoffs, sorry, this fight. He, he, he was points. giving you like 80 points, and I'm not right. joking a little bit, but like... No, no I mean, he was here <laughs> 50 point games. He yeah, had, uh, yeah. So, so Fields, Fields to me, I have no trep- I have no, no trepidation about it. I don't care if he tries to throw more. Guy with that amount of athleticism, I mean, the only person that compares to him physically in the NFL with the way that he runs, with that power and that finesse and that speed was is Michael Vick. And Michael Vick eventually learned to to throw enough sure. um, over time. You know, Lamar is a great example. Lamar Jackson, who I'm not very high on, by the way. Okay. Lamar is a great example of, of somebody who has probably taken too many hits by, by uh, Odyssey. He's 27. Mm-hmm. He's had a couple of down seasons. I mean, could that happen to Fields? Sure. But let's talk about Lamar along the way. 2018, 2019, number two quarterback behind Mahomes in the game. I'm worried about this year. Like as far as as, as Fields goes, I, I'm worried about this year coming up. I, I mean, I, I I see him just sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, DJ Moore, him. new addition. He's got some weapons. Yeah, it's wonderful. DJ, you know the the DJ Moore factor. Another guy that uh, like, I'm just uh, I'm loving from afar. Uh, I like this stack. Uh, Fields to Moore. You know, I like their running game with Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. I think yep. that that's going to take. Roshan Johnson's going by the end of the season going to take some of the heat off of Fields having to run. Yep. So I mean, let's not forget they already got Khalil Herbert. Then you're throwing in uh, Cole Komet into the mix. So Komet's a Komet's a, a very underrated tight end. Yeah. So I mean, on if, paper they mid road. You just yeah. need the O line to give him the time to make the throw to some very talented receivers. Because also Dante Foreman, who is now there, who was a season saver last year after they traded out uh, McCaffrey, at least for me. And now he's on uh, the Bears' depth chart, so yeah. they've yeah. got a lot of Foreman is yeah. the new uh, he's the new um, Latavius Murray. Right? <laughs> he's that giant fucking back that goes in and just vultures goal line uh, yes. opportunities from the uh, from the starters and the the more dynamic guys that he just you're like I can't believe this fucking guy is still around. Actually, Deontay Foreman has 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 like a gold standard background. Um, he was supposed to be when he came out. He came. I think he started in Houston. He was supposed to be like the next Arian Foster. And then he got hurt. You know, he tore his Achilles. Okay, and uh, the, the, that, that's the funny thing about us about Devonta Foreman is uh, Devonta Foreman is wherever he shows up, he produces eventually. Mm-hmm. He cuts into the workload, so you do have to keep that in mind. But yep, I do think that the way that the Chicago is trending, they're they're a little they're going to be a little high flying. I think they're going to score a lot of points. So yep. yeah, and I, they're like, going to be behind a lot in the third in the fourth quarter because even they are, they're still yeah. rebuilding, and it's coming from a Chicago fan. So for they sure, got, I, they got I, the I one of those five hundred teams that scores a, just scores a fuck ton of points every week. Yes, so one hundred percent. Okay, so all right, so you're high on fields. What? How about some guys like uh, Kenny Pickett or Daniel Jones? How are you feeling about them? 
So uh, to start Danny Dimes, Danny Dimes is, is, is another one that I, I love this season. So Danny Dimes is completely underrated for his running ability. Uh, Danny Dimes is that guy that you can get um, after all the rushing quarterbacks are gone. There, there, are, there are people out there that play zero RB, taking wide receivers only, that will take a quarterback like Hertz or Allen, right, or Lamar Jackson or Fields as their RB1, right, mm-hmm. because they really are. Danny Dimes is just a notch behind them. Uh, he'd be more like taking an RB2. Uh, so he's a really good quarterback to have with a hero RB or a zero RB build. I think this season he's got to open it up a bit. they got a shitload of fucked up little wide receivers going on over there. You know, uh, they, they got Darren Waller. He has a plethora of targets to throw to. Um, he has he's not one. afraid to run it in in the red zone. Right. He's, he's just one not, of those guys. This, yep. The thing is, he's super athletic. He's under the radar yep. athletic. He's the type of guy that that you can you could stag him in a redraft league. You know, which means don't keep it. No, you sag him like like rounds eight through ten. You basically are taking like like a bargain um, top end quarterback. Like to me, for sure, I have him ranked as my tenth. Um, Especially when you've got. I mean, we haven't even talked about Dax or Tua, where I get people who are probably going to value them higher than Danny Dimes. And especially this year, the novelty that's going to be Anthony Richardson, where, I mean, the dude's, you know, a freak athlete. I get that. But you may get that one person that's like, you know what? I know he's going to play from behind. I know he's going to run. I know he's going to throw. And then somebody's just going to grab him before Danny Dimes or, or you know, or Kirk sure. Cousins or something. I mean, and next thing you know, like you said, you get a good deal for a good quarterback. And if they have a little bit of a cheap code, like in Danny Dimes, who will run, then all of a sudden now, you, you know, if you've done your job in the other positions, you're still competing with the person who across the table has Mahomes. Yeah, and it, th- you know, this is the this is the thing about about a guy like Dimes. He's he's, he's your you know he's your bargain basement like electrifying quarterback. So get him. Pickett was the other the other guy you asked about. He he is a little bit like early Danny Dimes, right? Okay. Like he's got that those terrible throwing metrics. So he only threw for seven touchdowns last year. Uh, but he can run a little bit, right? Like, mm-hmm. like Pickett's a really good athlete, and he pick up grounds on, he can pick up yards on the ground. And with with some of these these more like project young quarterbacks like Pickett, uh, they don't necessarily let them run as much as as they will uh, on design plays once they know the offense better, once they're more comfortable. Uh, Pickett to me, uh, he'd be a like a flyer, a late round flyer in a, in a standard redraft league where you have ten or twelve teams. I don't think you're taking him as a starter. Uh, in, in two QB, I think he's a savvy pickup as a second quarterback. Um, I, I think it, he's definitely going after like Matthew Stafford, e- even like a Jordan Love, right? Like you're you're sure. kind of going for those guys more established who maybe their offense is going to be a little bit more established too. So y- you go with that. Well, here's the thing about Pickett though that, that, that like this is the end all be all with Pickett. His weapons are just absolutely filthy. He has Johnson Johnson, George Pickens, uh, Pat Fryermuth. He has Najee Harris. He has Jalen Warren. The, the the pass catching back. I mean this this team is deep. All pick all Kenny Pickett has to do is is just get the ball in George Pickens general direction. Pickett to Pickens. It's their it's that um, Burroughs Jamar Chase matchup where oh, they've oh, been doing a drop off. Yeah, it hurts, so long. It hurts into yeah. Devonta Smith, the Slim Reaper. It, with with Pickett, you Pickett's one of those guys where if he if everything goes right, he's Drew Brees. Then you're talking about a guy that's going to volume up because, like I said, he is going to run a little bit. Yeah. You know, he's not going to run it as much as Lamar Jackson or Jalen Hurts, but he is going to run more than Matthew Stafford. He mm. he definitely got to, you know, run more than like uh, Mac Jones. Like he, mm-hmm. he's just he, he's going to be out there waggling, you know, and uh, yeah, I think I think he has great potential. He's kind of definitely on on a on a late round sleeper list for me. I'd probably go more uh, like let, a, let him play for a couple weeks and then snag him on the waiver wire. What's a sleeper QB that you've got? I love Sam Howell. Uh, okay, Washington. I know that you know people listening to this when they see the date on it, they're going to say recency bias because he. Do you think that. Bellamy brings over the the Chiefs' offense and kind of opens it up for him? Yeah, this will be enemy the quarterback whisperer, right? He turns uh, Sam Howell into Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, uh, his offense coordinator <laughs> uh, previously previous stop was in Kansas City. Obviously, that worked out well with Patrick Mahomes, a special talent. But uh, Sam Howell size, um, speed. He does run. You know, he breaks the pocket when he has to. He's got a big arm. Um, which paid some weapons in Washington too. So Washington has McLaurin who mm-hmm. went out with turf toe. So yep. be careful with McLaurin. Um, they have uh, Jahan Dotson who mm-hmm. is the real deal. Running back by committee over there, but never running back by committee, but a couple of, of a couple of solid guys. Logan yep. Thomas is the tight end. Yep. 
Uh, but I just think that that the play designs allow allow, allow Howell to uh, succeed. I'm really I'm in on Howell if I can get him late into QB. Okay. Um, I'm in on Howell uh, again, sort of like Pickett uh, waivers a few weeks in. Pickett and Howell are the perfect guys to, to pair with Dak uh, with Kirk Cousins. Uh, so I know just one other one other um, uh, you know uh, get another radar sleeper. QB sleeper is uh, is Jordan Love uh, Packers. Um, really? Why, why are you high on on Jordan Love? Because I'm not I'm not feeling the love on him right size, now. Size, speed, same 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 metrics on Howell, right? Like just the potential to be a guy who who throws and runs, and I and I love that young receiving core. Romeo Dobbs, uh, Christian Watson is just godly. Um, Luke Musgrave, the tight ends. They yep. still have Aaron Jones, who does a lot for you as a quarterback when you have basically. Uh, dime store Alvin Kamara with one year left in his prime. Uh, you know, Aaron Aaron Jones should see a lot of a lot of like safety. Uh, okay, AJ Dillon too in there. AJ so. Dillon to punch it in. Um, I I think that if the Green Bay offense can get untracked with Love, Love could be like your surprise quarterback this year. I actually like him okay. with Howell and Pickett. Um, Love is a guy that I, I I will try to go home with this year in late rounds of drafts. All right, let's get into uh, into wide receivers then, Alan, because uh, I think you know if you go into the first few rounds, like we've been saying, Jefferson, Chase, Tariq Hill, Cooper Cup. Although you know he's on my all right, maybe put a little asterisk in there because you got to worry about the injury. AJ Brown, CD Lamb, the the uh, guys that everyone's going to go after. We get all okay. the usual suspects out. Let's go after the nuts. So let's so, so let's we'll skip. We're saying we're going to skip tier one, right? Yeah, because everyone's oh, oh. E- either you're either you have the the privilege right of getting like in that first few picks where you're going to have a Jefferson there or right. you're not. And now you're right. going to after an Amari Cooper, Devonta Smith, like you said, Metcalf with the Seahawks, you know, where, where's that other value when you're like, all right, I've got my WR one, I've got CD lamb. I got to find that WR. Cheaper. Sure. That's actually, that's a great way to put it. So say you're already, you're already cranking with, with Jefferson chase mm-hmm. lamb, AJ Brown. Um, I, I like to pair them first and foremost with the aforementioned Christian Watson. I think we're talking like the metrics, to explode, he catches the deep ball. He runs well. He's fucking humongous. Mm. Uh, he, he carries the ball a little bit. Um, you know they do a lot of reverses with him in Italy mm-hmm. Bay. So try to get your hands on Chris from Watson in the mid rounds. Uh, DJ Moore, we already talked about him with with Chicago. You're not DJ worrying Moore. about. Uh, you're not worried about matchups. You you don't think like someone like Mooney or or, or Chase Claypool, assuming he you know gets healthy and gets on the field, they won't. Uh, Siphon off some receptions for more. I don't. I, I think that so. I think Mooney is going to be slotted where he's supposed to be as a deep threat. Uh, Claypool will be modeling uh, Versace in Paris. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> season. And Darnell Mooney will be the beneficiary of the DJ Moore signing because Mooney is probably going to turn into like some version of later career DJX, right? Because Mooney can catch that deep ball, right? Yes. Mooney, when he was thrust into the number one receiver last year, he got beat up. Year before that, you know, when he was the number two receiver on Chicago's offense, he was he was like surprising, right? Mm. And we were all picking him up at the end of the season, and we were sticking him in. I, I you know, I used him uh, in, in 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 my three receiver league. I had him uh, starting as my flex at okay. the end of the twenty one season. So I think Mooney makes a Mooney makes a sneaky comeback this year because DJ Moore opens it up for him. Okay, because DJ Moore is probably the most undervalued number one wide receiver of like the last six or seven years. Stats for a guy like DJ Moore, they go they got swept under the rug for two reasons. They have it in Carolina, who sucks all the time, and he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns traditionally, right? So like he's due to score some fucking touchdowns. It's got to happen with the change of scenery. Let's move to another wide receiver, uh, Jerry Judy. Uh, Trying to get as much Jerry Judy as I can in PPR. Jerry Judy is a is is a PPR monster. He's a six foot what three inch mm-hmm. uh, slot player. Just absolutely leg breaking moves. Um, he 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 can catch. He can get yak afterwards. So uh, love myself some uh, some Jerry Judy in those in those middle rounds, like when you can grab him. Well, how do you what are you thinking about like a, a Gabe Davis in Buffalo? So I Gabe had him Davis, last year, and he's yeah. like hot, and then he kind of cooled off. But we had, had a few moments. Yeah, that monster fucking game where like yes. the, the sharps, right? Yeah, like you're. And I thought he had like fans. a 99 yard reception in one of those that might might have like you know skewed the numbers a little bit, but I don't care. It got me the I point, saw, so I didn't matter. <laughs> I saw somebody uh, somebody trade uh, Gabe Davis for I was it after week one? Yeah, that huge game in week one, right? Yep, Gabe Davis. 
I saw somebody trade Gabe Davis and Mike Williams for Stefan Diggs. Williams had the shit first week. Davis had the big first week. And and Steph had kind of like a middling first week. Yes. Everybody was like, Davis is the new wide receiver one for Buffalo. And no, the fuck he isn't. It's Steph Diggs. But yeah, someone pulled off that trade in one of my leagues. And I was just like, that is not a good trade. But Gabe Davis this year, definitely a positive regression candidate in every every. Uh, matter, but here's here's here are a couple of the issues. He does not have the greatest hands, right? Mm-hmm. Drops a lot of passes, a lot of drops Josh last year in there. I do believe that part of his bad season last year was just like with Diggs when Allen's elbow was injured. Everybody, the entire team went yep. down, right? Yep. Well, well, um, the defense knew that the deep ball was out, and even if it was, then with it was going to be a Davis's drop. hands yeah. and and Allen's uh, elbow. He's going to go for the short pass, and Gabe was out. Like you said, he was out of the picture. But here's the thing about Gabe Davis is if you get Gabe Davis in the 10th round now, that's yeah. where you want his ass because there you go. him in as a wide receiver three. Yes. You know, yeah, he has a lot of weeks where he's only scoring. Good matchup. If it's right. going to be a shootout, it's it's uh, Bills against uh, Chiefs, and he's and he's your flex. You're going to win the games that Gabe Davis yeah. uh, explodes in, and just maybe, just maybe, he hits the potential that we all saw in him last year to make him like a fourth-round fucking pick, which was – third round in some leagues yeah which was crazy you know we were all rushing him up the board this year because i really actually don't even foresee a guy this year who has the day the gabe davis hype uh, Mm -hmm. in the wide receiver uh class that you know like it's going to get like horribly overdrafted based on nothing more than like the end of the season before that happens a lot with running backs not so much with wide receivers but gabe davis sure take him late okay before we get into running backs throw me out one more wide receiver sleeper that you've got uh, Sky Moore, Kansas City. Um, What's been talking about him, man? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I, I really, I hope that the hype train doesn't rise him up to like the single digit rounds, but it probably will by the time I draft next week. You know, it's funny because uh, like the Chiefs, when uh, when Tariq Hill was traded, instead of throwing less, they just redistributed, and I think Sky Moore was a beneficiary of those. Kelsey will just get a few more passes, and you, what's your name? Sky Moore. Yeah, you come in, and if you do a good job, you're going to get five or six passes, and we're right. still going to throw as much, if not more. Well, Kelsey and Kelsey- um, Or two more. There you go. They can have that. Dude, Kelsey <laughs> was the biggest benefit beneficiary because he- For sure. Uh, has most career targets ever last year. Yes. Which is an interesting he ate stat. it up. It was amazing. Yeah, so, which is also a red flag for me, but the um, as far as Sky Moore goes, I'm targeting Sky Moore in in like middle double digit rounds. Okay, right? if I can get him, I'm not overpaying for him, but I do think that you all you do want a quarterback. I mean, you sorry, you do want a wide receiver that's paired with Patrick Mahomes and has been reported in training camp to be on the field with him in every two yes. wide receiver set. It sounds like he is the starting X receiver. Okay, for the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a good place to be. I mean, granted, that was Juju last year. Juju Schuster, Smith Schuster caught 76 balls from Holmes. Not really a wide receiver one season, but definitely when he played a wide receiver three, a wide receiver three season. I think Sky Moore has the ability to turn those targets that Juju got yeah. into fantasy gold. I mean, yeah. this kid can fly. He can fly. Trick plays. They love to throw him in for that, yeah. too. All right, and that's the end of part one of my conversation with Alan as we prepare for the fantasy football season, as we prepare for the draft. Make sure to listen to part two of our conversation where we dive into the RB roles. Everyone's talking about Eckler and McCaffrey. We're talking about Damian Pierce, Isaiah Pacheco, the Chicago Bears backfield. We also discuss tight ends. Is Kelsey going to have yet another productive season? Should you double down on the Darian Waller, Daniel Jones connection? Is the arrow pointing up or down for George Kittle or Luke Musgrave? Ellen and I throw out a few sleepers, some more fantasy strategy, and more. So make sure to come back for the second half where we're talking more fantasy football on the Fan to Fan podcast. Thanks for listening.